All right, we're going to let uh, Michael get started. Michael, why don't you uh, begin by just telling us maybe how practice has been going and how the last few weeks have been as you continue to get ready for the season. Um, practice has been going pretty good. Uh, everybody's just been, you know, trying to stay ahead of the game, you know, since we've, you know, hit this little detour, as you want to say. Uh, everybody just wanted to stay ahead, just stay you know, ready just in case, you know, we never knew whenever, you know, we were going to be able to play. So everybody just wanted to, you know, just keep working on that craft. Practice has been going good. Everybody's been bonding as a team. So it's been pretty good. All right. Uh, first question, we're going to go to Tom Crawford. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see if I'm on mute. Am I muted? Am I good? good? Oh, you're muted now. Michael, if you could have kind of explained the, in layman's terms uh, to our listeners and readers, the Viper position, the job description, if you will, and then how your skill set fits into the Viper. Um, well, the Viper position is kind of, is pretty much a combination of just a lot of different positions. I would, like if you would, to just put it in words, so you was like sometimes you lined up at safety, you lined up like a slot corner, you lined up man to man on the tight end, you're blitzing, you lined up, you know, like a linebacker. So it's just as a viper, it's just a lot of versatility, and um, I feel like I like my skill set, like just the versatility wise, you know, I feel like I can like play, coming from offense to defense, and you know, just I feel like I'm just that versatile player, and I feel like I fit pretty good for the Viper position. Thanks. All right, next question, we're going to go to Zach Shaw. Zach? Hey, Michael. Uh, thanks for taking the time. I'm, I'm curious how you ended up at Viper. I, I know when you were a recruit, uh, Jim Harbaugh compared you to Anquan Bolden as a receiver. You were listed as a running back, played quarterback in high school, I guess. What was the, what was the genesis of you becoming a Viper linebacker, and then how did you initially take it in that year one? <clears throat> well, I I played linebacker in high school, so I've I've had experience on the defensive side, and so when I came over, uh, Coach Brown just called me up like my freshman year, <clears throat> and so I just came and he had me do some drills like defensive drills, and he just was he saw you know that I could be I could do all of those drills good I could cover I could do all those things and he just told me that I could play Viper, and that's just kind of how it was. I started learning from Kalik and it just went from there. All right, next question, we're gonna to go to Orion. Hey, Michael, thanks for doing this. Uh, we talked to Cam McGrone last week um, and he said that he thinks you're more ready this year than you were last year. Can you sort of elaborate on what he might mean by that and, and take us through your development uh, since last season? Um, I feel like I've grown both physically and mentally since last year. Uh, Mentally, I've just, you know, went into the playbook harder, you know, learned the whole defense instead of just my position, you know, try to learn what everybody else has to do and learn where I fit into the scheme. Um, physically, you know, I just cut my body, just getting in more shape, uh, you know, just being able to be in shape to be able to cover, to be able to do all those and last in the game. So I just feel like I've just, uh, the word for it but I, yeah I just feel like I've grown since last year just both physically and mentally just to prepare myself okay remember if you have a question to uh, put your name in the chat or raise your hand in the chat our next question is from Ryan Zook hey Michael uh yeah Ben Van Sumer in kind of a, in a similar boat with you having played multiple positions uh at in high school and in college and switching over to line Brett Backer. What have you seen from, from him uh, so far? Uh, I've seen just his, you know, just his work ethic. Um, he's, he's going out there every day, wanting to learn, wanting to, you know, get better. And, um, you know, he's always asking questions, always just giving it his all for real, you know, just because he, 
he just trans uh, transitioned over not too long ago, you know, I think uh, for the spring. So he's just been, you know, trying to hit the books, trying to learn the defense and, you know, just try to help wherever he can. Okay, our next question comes from Aaron McMahon. Hey, Mike, thanks for doing this. Uh, you mentioned playing linebacker in high school, and I'm wondering how learning the Viper compared to, compared to that. Was it a difficult position to learn, and how long did it take you to kind of get all the job descriptions down? Um, it was, honestly, it wasn't that hard to learn I, um, coming from, you know, I feel, but I feel like that just transitioned over from playing, you know, quarterback because uh, I had to learn, you know, so many plays, so many different positions. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, it just came instantly, but it, it, it definitely helped, you know, being on offense and already having some defensive experience. It definitely helped to, you know, be able to learn faster. Okay, our next question is coming from Isaiah Hole. Hey, Michael, uh, you said you learned a lot from Kalik. What were the, the biggest things that he taught you, whether it be, you know, one-on-one -on -one or just learning by example? What were the biggest things that you were able to take away from him? Um, I would just say, other than his work ethic, because, you know, just being out there watching him, you know, go at it every day, practice in the weight room, um, just, you know, learning. I, I just really learned from watching. I, I watched his feet. I watched his hands. I watched how he covered. And, you know, uh, he just led by example mostly. He wasn't really talkative until maybe like his senior year when he stepped up as a defensive leader. But he, uh, yeah, I definitely learned from more of his work ethic than anything. Okay, we've got time for a few more questions until Andrew joins us around 1.30. Uh, next, we'll go to Angelique. Sorry, Sorry about that. Um, Michael, how much pride do you take the, the fake punts last year? How much pride do you take in, in getting those uh, and getting those opportunities and executing them so well? Um, I take a lot of pride in it. Um, there's a lot of people who don't, you know, realize the um, – work of special teams, you know, you can win or lose games from it. So, you know, just being able to go out there and, you know, have my name called and them being trusting me to be able to go out there and execute those plays, you know, I take a lot of pride in that. It's, Is that something you will continue to do this year? You'll, will you be uh, working in on, on special teams in those uh, in those kind of situations? Uh, yes, um, I'll, I'll have a more limited role and or like helping some of the younger guys come up uh, for the special team since I'll do more on defensive, defensively this year. But uh, yeah, I'll still be a contributing a little bit on special team. All right, for our next question, we're gonna go back to Zach Shaw. Mike, Don Brown said yesterday that uh, it's gonna be a battle at Viper with you and Anthony Solomon. I guess uh, we haven't seen a ton of Solomon at linebacker. What should uh, we and, and maybe readers know about him and then how do you two feel like you complement each other at, at that Viper spot? Um, I just feel like we, like just watching him, you know, he he's grown a lot since last year also. Just, uh, you know, just getting more comfortable in the defense, being more comfortable, you know, where he at. Um, we just, I feel like our speed, our techniques are getting similar and uh, yeah, like he, you know, I think I think just coverage wise, blitzing wise, we're a lot similar. All right, we've got a couple minutes left. If anyone else wants to uh, raise their hand in chat and get another question in, uh, is that another one from you, Angelique? Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah, I typed it in. Promise, um, Michael. I, I'm sorry, my uh, screen froze, so I don't know if you you answered this, but. Um, what is it about Viper that you like? What appeals to you about that position? Um, again, I would just say the versatility of it. Uh, you're pretty much doing, you get a, you know, the best of both worlds, you could say. Like, yeah, I get to play a little DB. I get to play a little uh, linebacker. I get to blitz. I get to, you know, cover. So it's just being able to be all over the field, make plays, and just always being around the ball. All right, uh, back to Aaron McMahon. 
Mike, we've asked you a lot about defense, obviously, and you, you obviously played that in high school, but how much do you miss being on the offensive side of the ball and, and playing quarterback? Um, I, I just miss, you know, scoring touchdowns, you know, making plays. I, I'm, I'm, I've always been the person to say I just like making plays. And, I mean, whether I'm doing it on offense, doing it on defense, uh, you know, as long as I'm making plays, regardless of where I'm at, I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a plus. All right, with that, I think we may be finished. I'll give everyone one more chance. If anybody has a final question. And if not, we will uh, thank Michael for his time and get ready for Andrew coming up in a few minutes here. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Mike. All right, thank you guys. All right, I believe Andrew is getting set up right now. He should be joining us in just a moment. There's the man, all right. Andrew, I'm gonna unmute you here. There you go. That's all. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. If you want to get started, maybe just give us a quick statement on how things have been going, how practice has been going um, as we continue to prepare for the season. Yeah, the practice has been going real well. I'm really proud of everyone, how they've kind of taken it really professionally. You know, we, we've been practicing for a while now, even when, even when there was no season in, in sight. But, you know, we, we really haven't skipped a beat at all. Uh, we stuck together, so we've kept going. So I'm really proud of this whole team so far, and I can't wait to, to show for it when we start to, to start playing again. Yeah. All right. Uh, our first question comes from Tom Crawford. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, Andrew, if you could take us through the process of the injury last year, preseason, how you navigated through that, not so much just physically, but mentally not playing and, and how far, how, how much work put in to take where you're at right now? Yeah. Yeah. So I sustained a season ending injury on uh, August last season during camp. Um, and it was pretty tough for me mentally, but it was it was good because it, it allowed me to take a step back, kind of, and uh, kind of look at the the whole unit, the whole team, um, from a different perspective. I helped a lot of younger guys kind of get where they were. I had a lot of knowledge of the game already. I was going to my third year, so I kind of knew a lot about um, the game and how to how to grow the younger guys. So I I, I helped them as best I could. Um, I helped with some some cut ups, some film and stuff. But it was a it was a big growing year for me uh, personally and mentally. And then as far as physically getting back, you know, I was in the training almost every day, you know, strengthening my leg, you know, helping to, you know, keep my body up to date, up to speed. So it was a lot of work in and out of the training room. And I'm really proud of where I've come. Um, I'm thankful for the trainers and all the coaches that helped me get to where I am today. And, you know, we're putting pads on again. We're having a full, you know, kind of a live now seven period. And it's the first time in over a year that I put on pads and I've got to fully hit. So I, I can't wait for it. Thanks, Andrew. Our next question is from Isaiah Hole. Isaiah? Hey, Andrew. Uh, from what we heard, you've transitioned from tackle to inside to guard. Uh, what's that transition been like? And do you have a preference, whether you play outside or inside? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I've played tackle most of my career here. But I did play a little left guard going into my sophomore year when uh, Ben Bryson kind of his knees swelled up. So I moved into guard for a little bit. So it is a little different for me playing guard. but. Um, I don't really have a preference. I'm all about what, whatever's helping the unit, whatever's helping the team. But um, it, it has helped me from playing tackle from a guard's perspective. Now I know what I like to play as playing a tackle. And so I can help tailor my play to whatever the tackle needs. And, you know, it's really just helping get the, get the technique down, helping the center, getting the center and guard calls right. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm experienced there. And, you know, in the long run, it's only going to help me with the versatility 
um, playing tackle and guard. So I'm happy with it right now. All right, remember, if you have questions for Andrew, you can uh, raise your hand in the chat. Our next question is from Orion. Hey, Andrew, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, I was curious, you know, how did you take the injury last year, considering you were uh, on a cusp of earning a starting job? You know, how, how did that affect you mentally? And, and how did you sort of process that injury news? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, definitely, it was definitely difficult to to kind of comprehend, you know, work so far to get so hard to get to that. And I was, I was starting at the end of uh, my sophomore year. So it was really kind of a, a pivotal year for me. But, you know, I kind of just took it in stride, you know, took it as this was going to be kind of a step back. I was kind of going to take a year off from football. I kind of, you know, took away from, from the practicing, from everything. So it was kind of just kind of step back, kind of a mental year for me. Um, but, you know, I had a great support system and, you know, my team, my coaches, friends, and family. So they, they helped to, to kind of raise me up. And then, you know, I've been building and building to this point, And, you know, I'm stronger than ever. So can't wait. All right. Our next question comes from Zach Shaw. Andrew, thanks for taking the time. Uh, last week, Cam McGrone said he felt the team was 10 steps ahead because of not practicing. I know you kind of mentioned it in your opening remarks, but I guess what did it, what does it say about the team that, they, that you guys didn't stop practicing? And then specifically for the offensive line, how do you feel that chemistry, the, the timing and everything is with having a, a few more extra weeks to prepare? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Cam. I think that, you know, we, we never stop practicing. I think not only does it just show that we're 10 steps ahead, but it shows our commitment. So, you know, our team and to how, how dedicated we are to playing this game. Um, and so, you know, we, we never took a day off. We never stopped and, you know, kind of pouted or anything when the season got canceled. We knew that, you know, our chance would come. And, you know, it, it came sooner than a lot of people thought, you know. And so we, we had to keep preparing, as Coach Harbaugh said, just keep preparing every day like it's going to come up. And as far as an offensive line perspective, you know, after we lost four guys to the NFL who are all playing, doing great things, um, it was really important that we started building the chemistry right back up. So by not taking any time off, you know, getting in the getting the film room, seeing how people play, seeing how people play together, especially, it's been really really helpful in building the chemistry of the offensive line. With, you know, four new players getting in there, um, in different positions and everything. So, not so still still having practice has really helped us, you know, build chemistry overall. And I think our offense, defense, and special teams will value greatly from it. Okay, next question. Moving over to Angelique. Andrew, how, how did the injury happen? Do you remember it? And, and, and what were you thinking um, as you were, uh, I would imagine, in pain at that point? Yeah, uh, it was during a, a live period. I believe it was August uh, 11th or 12th. Um, we were during, towards the end of practice. It was actually the Big Ten media day um, of camp that one day. So we were towards the end of practice. Um, and that was at the point when John Runyon's knee started acting up. You remember he got he had his knee scoped in the beginning of the year. So I was playing right tackle, and then he went down, and so I switched over to left. Um, and Jalen went to right tackle, and then we were in a live period. Um, I was getting bull rushed by one of the ends, so I was sitting down, kind of clamping. And uh, one of the D tackles um, got thrown in, kind of back of my knees, got rolled up, um, and then went down from there. So uh, that was kind of it. Trent took me in, got the MRI and everything, and that's, that's kind of how it happened. Who, who do you seek out at that point? I mean, is it, you know, Grant Newsom's around the building. Did he talk to you a little bit about going through this process? We have different injury, but mm -hmm. that you have to go through it. Yeah, Grant Newsom is definitely a great outlet for me. You know, he he had he had a kind of a worse injury for me, um, so he was kind of a great guy to go talk to. You know, he he would check in on me and see how I was doing because he still comes in for you know rehab and, and to strengthen his knee still and his leg overall. So he, he was ready to talk to. Uh, Lucas Andrew Gett is another guy who went through an ACL recently, so I talked to him. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's a bunch of people who are around the building who, who knew the pain I was in, um, and I could go talk to again with that support system. All right, our next question comes from Ryan Zoop. Hey, Andrew, it seems like Zach Zinter has drawn some pretty strong reviews so far. Where, where is he kind of slotted in, in so far in camp? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zach is doing really good, really good things. Um, he's been bouncing around, you know, guard and tackle. We don't know exactly where we want to put him yet. But he's been doing really great things to come in. He's, you know, he's, he's a big, strong kid. Um, so, and he's, he's, he's really quick to learn, too. I love kind of teaching him things because he'll pick it up right away. Um, and so I, I, I can't wait to see where he contributes, how he contributes. But he's been showing some great things on and off film um, in the weight room, you know, with a great attitude and everything. So I just can't wait to see, you know, how he contributes. I don't know whether that's going to be, you know, in the three or twos if we're going to redshirt him this year. But he's been doing some great things, and I just can't wait to see how, how he progresses. Okay, uh, the next question we're going to take is from Austin Meek. 
Hey, Andrew. Um, so I know last year before you got hurt, you were in a position battle with Jalen. Uh, what was your perspective watching him uh, blossom when he got his chance last year? Were you talking to him when he was making his decision and, and how important is it to get him back now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the, I guess that was one upside. You know, when I went down, I knew, I knew the offensive line was still in good hands with Jalen. Um, you know, he's a great player. And so watching him throughout the year really grow and learn from the coaches, you know, kind of fit into his own was something that was, that was really great to watch. You know, I enjoyed watching film with him, you know, helping coaching him out, giving him points when I could. Um, it was really great to see. And so, you know, when he, when he kind of made the decision to opt out, it, was, it came as kind of a shock to us. But, you know, it was his decision. I was in a little bit of contact with him, you know, kind of getting in his head, seeing what he's, what he's back, what, you know, when, when he was thinking about coming back maybe when we got the season. But then when he finally made the decision to come back, you know, it just kind of all clicked. You know, he's coming back. He's working again. He's working hard. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of like he's never skipped a beat. Um, so, you know, it helps with the overall online chemistry. You know, we're all gelling well again. So it feels really good. All right, our next question is from Ko. Hey, uh, Andrew, um, you, you mentioned the, the chemistry, but, but for a unit that, like the offensive line that's so uh, contact-based, what have you guys been able to work on in these practices without pads? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Coach Warner has really been, really been focusing on kind of our first, our first couple steps, our eyes, our hand placement. And just overall, the mentality of the game, I'd say that's the biggest thing for the younger guys. Um, the, the hardest thing with the young guys, I think, coming from, you know, especially from high school or even second year guys is the mental aspect of the game, knowing your assignment, knowing how to block, know your aiming point, know everything. And so with not having pads, not having to be able, be able to do contact, that was the biggest focus. And so I think that has leveled the playing a lot for the younger guys. They're, you know, they, now it's no longer the mental aspect is, is them lagging behind. It's more the physical thing that you have to develop. But you no, know, I feel like all the alignment have a good understanding of the offense as a whole. You know, their 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 assignment, their position. So I think that's helped a lot with with our no padded practices. Mm -hmm. And then and then if I can if I can add a quick follow up, I imagine it's not the same every day necessarily, but who's been uh, primarily working with the ones uh, recently? Yeah, so we we we've been kind of rotating a couple. Um you know when Jalen came back, you know, we we didn't want to exactly put him in there. But you know he's been in there. Um, Carson and Barnhart's been in there. I've been in there. Zach Zinner. Um, then, you know, Trevor Keegan, Chuck Piliaga, um, Brian Hayes, and I'd say Trent A. Jones are all ones that have been kind of circling around the ones right now. Um, so it's definitely not set. You know, it's still open competition, but there's definitely a good amount of competition that's still left on the table. All right, for our next question, we're going to go back to Tom Crawford. Yeah, Andrew, I wanted from, from your offensive line standpoint, um, Give us this perspective. It seems like against really good defenses, Michigan's struggled over the years to, to run the football against a quality defense and, and getting that third and four and conquering that. From a run blocking standpoint, w w where do you think this offensive line is in order to, to maybe ramp that quality up? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we've been, we've been doing a great job learning the technique and learning our assignments. I think that's some of the biggest, the biggest problem with an offensive line is when, you know, when is learning on the fly, you know, when, when you may get a base look, but then when it starts changing, you know, that's when an offensive line can, can truly, you know, fall apart. You know, if you don't understand the concept of the defense, who needs to be blocked, where the block is, where the run is aimed, where's the aiming point is, you know, it can really fall apart. But I think now that we have the mental aspect of the game locked down, when, you know, the picture changes, when it changes on the fly, we can quickly adapt to that. And I think that's a, that's a big aspect that offensive linemen struggle to grasp. And so by, by us practicing with no pads and understanding the, you know, the entire, the offense in entirety, knowing where the running back wants to run, knowing where, you know, what hole he's trying to get to, what, run, what linebackers we need to block. Uh, I think it could really take us to the next level. And, you know, we're putting pads on today. So then, you know, the next part is the physicality aspect. And I think we're going to keep growing that until our first game. Thanks. All right. We've got time for just a couple more. We're going to go back to Angelique. Andrew, I just um, it's curious, what makes the start is the right um, the right fit at mm -hmm. center? Yeah, um, Andrew's been doing really good things so far in camp. You know, he's he's a very smart guy. He's going to he's trying to go to med school right now, so he is he's you know he's a very very high you know high motor guy. He he knows a lot about the offense. He understands a lot about. It. He's lost a good about of weight, so he's moving really well right now. Um, he's able to pull, move, you know, kind of get up to linebacker deliver the blow and so he's doing really good things and as far as an older guy he's he's kind of you know he's kind of a father figure for a lot of the older guys um he's he's you know he, he knows what he's doing he knows how to act he knows how to carry himself so kind of a kind of a model for a lot of the younger guys to look at 
and you know I, I can't wait to, to, to see how he performs this season. All right, next question from Aaron McMahon. Andrew, you, you mentioned being in Jalen's ear about returning. How much pressure did you guys as players kind of put on him to, to come back and play this year? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I put in too much pressure on him. You know, it was more just kind of like talking to him, seeing where his head was at. You know, obviously it was his own personal decision, so I don't want to, you know, get in his head. You know, it's, it's definitely a family-oriented decision and everything. So, but I was definitely talking to him, you know, when, when he left. It was kind of a big shock, I felt like. But, you know, I was definitely in contact with him, talking to him, never, never trying to, you know, give him too much pressure or anything. But, you know, it was definitely something where we were in talks, and, and you know, I, was, I just wanted the best for him. And then definitely when the season came back, you know, you heard, you heard the rumble. The rumors coming back, but um, it was it was great to see him make make the decision of coming back, and I can't wait to play next to him. All right, if anyone else wants to make one last addition to the, the chat, go right ahead. And if not, uh, we're going to thank Andrew for his time and call it a day. Angelique, want to get one last question in? Go right ahead. Yeah, I do. Andrew, I mean, you, you just talked about um, playing next to Jalen. Can you describe the, the chemistry that you need? I mean, being right next to a guy, what, you know, do you have to think this? Do you finish each other's sentences? I mean, how do you have to, uh, how has that relationship developed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely develops, you know, with just everyday practice. But, you know, it, it gets to the point where, since I've also played right tackle, you know, like I said, I know what he's looking for in a guard on a, on a double block or, you know, whatever on a double team. So, you know, it gets to the point where if we run a play, we, we, you know, we just have to say the number of the guy working to, we have to say, you know, what block we're doing or the technique we're doing, but you know, we're, we're pretty much on the same page already. And so by watching film and, you know, getting on the same page, it's, it's helped a lot with our chemistry the, as the old line as a whole. And so, yeah, playing next to him and he's, he's, he's now a veteran player. He's a whole season under his belt. So he knows what he's looking for too. And so, yeah, both of us are pretty experienced players. So it's, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to play next to him now. Okay, our final question comes from Zach Shaw. Andrew, you've seen a few different offensive lines in your time at Michigan. I'm just curious, you're about three weeks away. How, how far along does this line feel with so many new faces, but maybe veteran players? And then, and then how much further do you feel like you still have to go to be, I guess, game ready? Mm -hmm. I feel like as far as the mental side of the whole line, like I said, I think we're, we're pretty much there. You know, we, we, we have a whole understanding of the offense, a whole understanding of, you know, how it can change and how we can adapt to it. I just think the, the next piece is the, the physical side, which, you know, we just got to be able to put pads on yesterday. That was our kind of acclimation period. Today is our first day of kind of full go. So I think, uh, you know, that's the next piece. That's putting it together. But I think overall as an offensive line, you know, we're looking really athletic. We're looking really good, really strong. Um, fast and quick and so I, I can't wait to see that all put together with pads and, and you know showing the first game against Minnesota. All right thank you everyone for joining us Andrew thank you for your time uh, and we'll talk to you all soon have a great afternoon. Awesome thanks for having me. Thank you.